I have Mike, John, Ruth, Amber, Miss B, Carol, Rory, and myself that I'll be helping out. Guys, I got some stuff over here. I got plenty of this pumpkin stuff. You can take two of them. <laughs> I come here mainly because I need a place to eat. I'm not able to afford to feed myself. But you know, I mean, before there were soup kitchens, people who didn't have employment or enough employment to provide themselves with food uh, had to get it wherever they could. Uh, well, a typical day at the soup kitchen starts for me about 6.30 in the morning. I usually stop on my way in at our warehouse and pick up food that we need for the day. I usually get here between 7 and 7.30. Uh, one of our other volunteers, Wilbur, arrives between 7 and 7.30, and between him and Mike and myself, we get the basic meal set up and running. We open up the cans of vegetables, we get the water on the stove boiling, we've got this, the dishwasher operating. We get the basic things set up. And then as the other volunteers ar arrive around 8.30, um, Diane Grant, our dining room supervisor, arrives at the same time. My main job is to basically keep the dining room in order, make sure that everything runs smooth. I am in charge of three different groups, which is community service people. I started working at the soup kitchen August 11th and it will be 11 years come this August. I find it very rewarding. Um, like I, sometimes it's, it's very difficult because we feed about anywhere from 125 to 200 people in a two hour span. Our cook arrives about nine o'clock and by that time, if we're having stew or something, they'll have the meat cut up and the vegetables cut up so she can actually prepare the meal itself. But in the course of the day, most of the work is done between 11 and 1.30 because we serve lunch from 11.30 to 1.30. And uh, volunteers get the takeout packages ready about 10.30, 11. I'm here fulfilling uh, my obligation to do 112 hours community service. Um, really, I've been doing whatever they ask me to do. It consists of serving people, basically anything they need me to do. Uh, the people who come to the soup kitchen are homeless people. They're people who are mentally ill. They're people who have chronic substance abuse problems. I mean, currently, we have nurses from the Hill Health Center come in. We have people come in from Connecticut Mental Health. My job at the soup kitchen is to provide basic medical care. Uh, on top of that, I, I kind of wear two hats. One is through the Hill Health Center where we do the basic medical care, and the other is through outreach and engagement through Connecticut Mental Health, where I'm always trying to engage people that we know are sleeping outside or that we know are homeless. So I try to pursue them and try to at least start a relationship in some way. I think the main job really is to, to assess the client and try to help them help themselves in trying to take care of their medical issues. The real serving starts at 11.30 and we might have six or eight volunteers serving lunch and two or three others working in the kitchen, washing pots, washing pans and doing all the dishes, getting, keeping the kitchen cleaned up. Uh, later in the day, I might go out back to our warehouse to pick up whatever other things we need. Um, on Mondays and Thursdays, we go out to the food bank, and our appointment there is at 1.30 in the afternoon, or yeah, 1, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, so we'll do our shopping, get the food back here, organize it, put things in the refrigerator that need to be refrigerated, and um, things that are going to go out to our warehouse just stay in the van. Um, by the end of the day, that is at 1.30, the dining room is clean, the food is put away, the uh, kitchen's cleaned up. I spend time here on the computer. 
but it's difficult to concentrate a lot <laughs> on things as so much is going on around us. So uh, if I have to work on a grant application or work on letters and that sort of stuff. So uh, the day goes from 6.30 to whenever, at least for me. <laughs> Living here in Connecticut, we're in one of the wealthiest, we are in the wealthiest state in the country. And yet people have to keep be, being reminded that there's hunger and poverty all around them. And I believe that education would help out more and people getting in, involved will understand what is actually out here. There are a lot of poor people in New Haven. There are a lot of hungry people in New Haven. And some are by choice and some is not, you know, and it's, people need to be aware of what it is because it hasn't gotten any better. To, it, to, the amount of people have, has picked up tremendously, you know. We should be able to um, educate as many people as we can, anyone and everyone, about the situation. And it's not just here, it's everywhere, it's worldwide. And, and if we, the more people that know, the more people may care and the more people may get involved. And then education is crucial because we have to understand the economic forces and the mental health issues that put people at such, under such stress, and then the specifics of individual lives, why they have no options, why they have you know, reached a point where they need the support to help them either just sustain their lives or actually begin to turn their lives around. And by providing this meal, this sense of respect and welcome, we can make an enormous difference in their lives. Being in the soup kitchen helped me turn my life around because, um, it, it showed me that I could do better, that I could get better, and it also helped me to reach a goal in, in my life um, for future reference and, um, and how to build. The community soup kitchen benefits my life um, in the fact that when I have um, a low, low income, and um, I'm not able to get um, enough food in my in my home. That I'm able to come here, and it benefits me in that in that area. Private donations are very important to the soup kitchen because most of our money goes on paper goods, food, and. Um, the, the um, up-to-date supplies that we need, the perishable goods and stuff, and the donations really help out. I think if more people were aware of this, what really goes on here and they could see it, I'm sure there would be more coming in. Uh, do I think more donations would be beneficial to the soup kitchen? Absolutely. They, they would use it in, they've always used it very appropriately. Anything that they ever get, they, they work hard to get. It's awful hard these days to kind of squeeze that money out of people and they do a real good job at it. I think that obviously the more money that they had, the better off they could be. The soup kitchen has to be able to provide the supplies, it has to pay its staff, um, just in the same way that the parish has a building to maintain, and utilities to pay, and so people's contributions are essential to this work going on. One of the great gifts of an institution like the community soup kitchen is that it clarifies and reminds us those of us who have so many resources, that we have much for which to be grateful and that we can accomplish much good if we learn to give of ourselves and of our money to accomplish things that do make the world a better place.